Hi everybody. Okay, so time again, a little late for another Lockanari. Mm -hmm. So weather exactly hasn't been great. So all the time for a good story. This is a bit of an old one, and it's always been one of my favourites. So here we go. Right. So if you're sitting comfortably, then I'll begin. <laughs> Lockanari presents the brave little tailor mm. by that way a bit. The Brothers Grimm. Mm. Happy in him. Brothers Grimm. So. One day, there was, sat in his little tailor shop, a normal little tailor. He was the same pretty much as you and me and everybody else. <clears throat> and he was just stitching a rather nice pair of trousers just to himself with a little needle. And stitching one stitch, two stitch, three stitch. And he was doing this a little bit quicker than normal because he was looking forward to his lunchtime and he had two very big large sandwiches with lovely strawberry jam in it. Mm. So he tried stitching as quickly as he could but then in through the window through a small swarm of little flies. So he wasn't going to let any flies get in the way of his dinner so he watched them all fly around and then they all landed in the jam and they just had they just sat there nibbling at themselves and playing catch with a strawberry so he thought well that's my lunch i'm not having anyone sharing my lunch so reaching over for a fly swatter he waited until they were all stood in one place and splat looking down he'd actually managed to see that he'd actually killed seven of them in one go so he thought to himself, yeah, well, pretty impressive that. I mean, seven at one blow. Huh. I'll tell you what, I'll stitch something to let everybody know how great I am. So, reaching down for a little bit of stray leather, he managed to find a long belt, which then he took out his thread and stitched on it seven at one blow. So he pulled the, put the belt around his waist, and then thought, well, I better go tell everybody about this story. So he trotted off into the world to let everybody know. While he was just outside of the kingdom, he came across a stray field. And in that field was a small chicken. I was clucking around on the floor. So he thought, hmm, well, I might get hungry later. So I'll see if I can catch it. So he crept at the chicken and managed to catch it and put it in his bag. So, carrying on through the world, he came across what looked like a really large hill. So he thought, that would be a good idea to take some shelter under, so he walked towards it. However, upon, a, upon approaching the hill, he actually saw that it wasn't a hill at all. It was, in fact, a huge giant. Yeah, a really big, ugly fella. And he went, ah, hello, Mr. Giant. Yeah, pleasure to see you, just walking about telling everyone how great the world is right now, to which the giant just looked down at him and said, Why don't you leave me alone? <laughs> Get off, you little titchy man. But then, looking down onto his belt, he suddenly saw the belt had seven at one blow. Now, giants generally aren't the smartest of creatures. So he thought to himself, mm, Well, I better show this fella just how better I am at him. Mm. So he said, Right, I'll bet you... I can throw this massive stone so far away. To it, the brave little tailor just said, mm, fair enough, go ahead and throw it. So he managed to pick up a huge stone off the ground, and it was the size of a skyscraper. Picked it up and hurled it. And it went so far, it landed with an earthquaking crunch about 50 miles away. The tailor looked at that and said, well, not bad, 50 miles there, yeah, pretty big. I'll tell you what then, I'll bet I can throw something and it won't come back at all. You won't even see it. The giant thought, <laughs> no, you can't do that, no. So, reaching into his bag, he pulled out his chicken that he'd been keeping and he picked it up and he threw the chicken and it flew through the air with a and flew all the way into the sky and out of sight. 
Now, true to his word, the chicken didn't come back at all. So the giant thought to himself, oh, This fella's pretty strong, he is. Oh, tell you what, I'll take you back to my brother and you can stay the night. Yeah. So, the giant leading the tailor back to his giant cave thought, mm, when my brother sees him, he'll squish him. Mm. So taking him back, the giant, who was about the size of a skyscraper, took him back to the cave and sat him in front of a huge roaring flame that was as bright as the sun and as hot as the worst sunburn you've ever had. Mm. That's pretty bad. So he gave him a bit of food that was basically the size of an entire cow and slapped it down, breaking up his tools. He was like, mm -hmm. mm. thank you very much. This will shoot me down, this shoot me down to the ground, this. Mm. Mm. So a few hours later, who should come in the cave but the big brother, Osric. Now, the giant, the first one, was pretty big, but Osric was enormous. Hello, Osric. Hello, yeah. Yeah, I brought this fella back because he was really, really strong. Taylor on the ground just looked up at Osric, who was this, almost the size of a country. He says, oh, hello, Osric, how are you doing? Uh, my little brother says you threw something and it went so far it was never seen again. Yeah, yeah, pretty amazing guy, me, you know. Take a look at this. And he showed him his belt and it had seven at one blow. Now, Osric was pretty strong and he was a huge giant, but he'd never killed seven people at one blow before. So, not wanting to take any chances, he thought, mm, Well, mm, in that case, you can sleep in my bed. <laughs> so, taking him over to the bed, which was enormous. It was about the size of Europe. It was that big. So, realising that he can't really climb a bed like that, because if he fell out, he'd break every bone in his body. So, what the, probably the best idea was, was to sneak underneath it and just sleep there. Now, in the middle of the night, both Og and Osric, they had the idea. You see, heroes, they can come loads and loads, but no one really gets a hero when they're asleep. So, taking up with their big clubs and their big axes, they crept into the bedroom and smashed, smashed, smashed. They smashed the bed to pieces and then they smashed the pieces into splinters and then they smashed the splinters into dust. Thinking to themselves, <laughs> no one can survive that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, they went off to bed themselves, and the next morning, they woke up and started to eat a whole field full of sheep and bacon. Now, unsurprising to them, they didn't know that the little tailor was underneath the bed, away from trouble. So, when he walked in the next morning, <laughs> Ah, hello giant friends, how are you doing, eh? Really good night's sleep, that never felt anything. They both looked at each other like, oh, he's still alive! Oh no, he's still alive! Look it! And they ran over the furthest hills, away from everywhere. The teller looking both at this marvellous spectacle, just thought, hmm, wonder what's good up them. Ah, oh, well, might as well have the rest of this uh, massive cow steak they've given us. So he finished off his breakfast, and thought he'd walk over to see the king himself. Now, Going all the way to the kingdom wasn't too much of a problem. But not just anybody can go and see the king, you know. No, no. You've got to get through all the bodies and the secretaries. Mm. So, walking straight up to the palace, he looked at the guards on the outside who were standing there, and they said, Hmm. Uh, hello there, sir. Uh, may I help you? Uh, yes, I've uh, come to see the king and just say him how great I am. I mean, look at this. And he showed up his belt. Seven at one blow. Well... Seven at one blow, this must be a pretty amazing guy. Hmm. So he thought, well, I don't want to be on the end of this guy's fist, so uh, I'll, I'll better go tell the king. So he walked in, and he saw the king. Now the king was sat in his throne room, just gazing around at all that he surveyed. As, er, yes, rather. Hmm. Er, you little peasant, you need a tax break? <laughs> well, no, you can't, because we need the money to keep everything going. Ta-ta. No, don't worry, I'll give you tomorrow off. 
So the guard walked in and said, uh, excuse me, sir, uh, we have um, uh, uh, this gentleman here. Oh, don't worry, I'll tell him who I am. You see, I'm uh, quite a hero now, you see. I killed seven at one blow. Look at this. Showed him his belt. And I thought, oh, oh goodness. I mean, this fellow seems like a rather rather nasty person. Well, he seems very heroic at anything. I mean, if he killed seven people at one blow, hmm, um, I don't want him staying here. I mean, that could ruin the whole morale of the country. Hmm. I'll tell you what there, my friend. He says, right, um, if you do something to me, uh, I will, um, if you do me a favour, I will grant you a royal kingly boon. Taylor went to himself, oh, kingly boon. That sounds pretty good. Yes, uh, yes, we need to give this chap something that he won't come back from. Um, yes, I don't want them worrying everything. Uh, ah, yes, I know. Uh, yes, um, there are two large, horrible monstrosities that are living out in the countryside. Um, if you're so powerful, you know, seven at one blow and everything, uh, would you mind just uh, popping off and dealing with them for me? Um, and if you do that, I will, I'll give you half of my kingdom. Mm. So the tailor thought to himself, well, pretty good deal, sort out two horrible monsters, and I'll come back and I'll get myself half a kingdom. Brilliant. So, heading out through the kingdom with his sewing kit and his belt, seven at one blow, went back off into the kingdom. Now... Going about a hundred miles, he managed to see there were two large mounds in the distance. Hmm, that must be them. So creeping up, he looked and he thought, Ah, oh, look, it's them two again. Og and Osric. Oh, man. I thought they were gone for good. Oh, well. Oh, well, well, if the king needs something done about them, well, I'm the guy to do it. So he crept up beside the two giants at night time and climbed a tree. So, grabbing himself a load of pebbles, picked up a couple of pebbles and threw them down on Og. Onto his head, then landed with a pfft. Og got up and turned around. Here, stop chucking stuff at me, I'm trying to sleep. Went back down again. So this time, he turned around, picked up a couple more pebbles and flung them down at Osric, the bigger brother. Now, Osric was bigger and meaner and uglier. So he turned around to Og and says, Here, stop making noises and stop waking me up. Turn around. So he thought, right, this'll do it then. So he picked up all of the pebbles he could and threw them down on all of them. Both Og and Osric, little pebbles dangling across their face, waking them both up. Right, I've told you what would happen if you wake me up, so you've had it. So then what happened was, they picked up two nearby trees and started hitting each other with them. Then they picked up two massive hills and started hitting each other with that as well. And on and on it went, all night, whack, 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 smashing each other as hard as they could. Until finally, by the end of the morning, they were both thoroughly dead. They'd beaten each other to death. So the tailor, full of confidence, went back into the kingdom, says, oh, yeah, <laughs> hello, yes, I've uh, dealt with those two things, I uh, need to see the king. So the king was back in his throne room. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, well, lovely flag I've got here, and yes, uh, here I say, what, what are you doing back? Uh, yeah, I just uh, dealt with those two, uh, Og and Osric, I knew they were, yeah, now for trouble. Yeah, don't worry, I've sorted them out, they're both dead now. Here, oh, oh dear. Um, uh, yes, yeah, yeah, so I owe you half the kingdom now, don't I? Um, now, he's a little bit worried, because this king, he wasn't a bad king, but he did like having a whole kingdom to rule. He didn't fancy splitting it up. He thought, um, yeah, well, well, uh, a, a hero such as you surely deserves more than a half a kingdom. So um, uh, I'll tell you what, if you can do me one more favour, then uh, I'll, I'll throw in my lovely daughter as well, and you can marry her. To which the daughter's standing nearby went, Ah, oh, Dad, do I have to marry him? Shut up, dear, shut up, dear. Don't worry, he won't come back. Um, uh, yes, uh, what I need you to do, I need to see if you could trap me a unicorn. Yes. Now, unicorns are exceptionally rare. If you can capture one, I'll be able to give you half of the kingdom, and I'll throw in my daughter as well, and you can marry her. Yeah. So the tailor thinking, well... That might be a bit tricky, that. I mean, unicorns are hard to find at the best of times. So he wandered out into a nearby forest and slept there for three whole moons. 
Now, when the last full moon arised, who should he see approaching in a glade of moonlight was a unicorn, shimmering white and silver, with a long horn protruding from its horsey head. Mm. So, thinking, right, there's a unicorn, what do I do? Ah, I know. So he stood in front of a tree and said, Unicorn! <laughs> now the unicorn was generally a kind creature, but he didn't like strange people wandering up to him in the middle of the night and pulling funny faces. I mean, would you? <laughs> no. So he thought, right, I shall give this fella a wallop he'll never forget. So he rode on his hooves, he started clawing and pawing with his hooves, and then he charged towards the tailor. Taylor, being brave, he just stood there and saw the unicorn go charging towards him and at the very last moment took a side to the left and poof! The unicorn went straight into the tree and his horn was strapped, trapped in there. He says, right, job done, I'll go get me reward now. So, heading back over to the kingdom, he says, hello, yes, I'm back again. He says, oh, not again. Fine, fine, I'll let you up. So, took him back up to the kingdom to meet the king himself. <laughs> yes, I must say, every time I wear this, this lovely robe, it feels even better. Just be oh, goodness me! Uh, hi, king, how are you doing? Yes, I've uh, captured your unicorn. It's uh, stuck in a tree just outside of the, for outside of the kingdom there. Um, yeah, yeah, amazing guy, me, you know, seven, yes, yes, seven at one blow. Um, well, very well, then, as promised, I shall, uh, I shall give you half of my kingdom, and, uh, I let you, uh, marry my daughter. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. So, the tailor then married the princess and had a very happy ceremony as well. And all the kingdom's guards... They used to nice walking around in nice military uniforms, thanks to the tailor, who was really good at making things like that. And this went up to the king and said, oh, uh, Your Majesty, sir, I, I must say, uh, this uh, new knight of yours, he's a pretty amazing guy, you know. I said, oh, yes, he definitely is. I must say, your uniforms look exceptionally splendid. And he's knitted me this rather pleasant new-looking flag. I must say, it feels very amazing. And he stitched me the quite most excellent pair of trousers I've ever worn. Mm. I said, yes, who would have known a hero would do such wonderful things? I know, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Anyone would think he was a tailor. <laughs> so, you remember, dream big and always go for it. So, hope you've enjoyed the little tale. It's always been one of my favourites. So, I'll try and come back with another story soon. So remember, stay safe. Keep your hands clean and sweet dreams. Cheerio.